as the vaccines have rolled out, anecdotally, have you seen an, an uptick in particularly older guests and visitors that are sort of re-emerging and coming back out? We have, and good morning, just recently. Um, what we saw early on was a lot of young people coming out, um, restless, ready to get back to their lives. And we were able to open the museum first in September and then uh, again after short closure over the holidays in January. And we see the gradual rise in attendance during that period of time. And it's, and it's probably been a, a wonderful thing to see. I know you are still operating at limited capacity but how is how is demand? I mean, pretty much every day are you are you welcoming in as many people as you are allowed to do right now, Timothy? Oh, well, we changed our days as well, Brian. Um, we realized that most people could come out um, on and around the weekends, so we we limited our days to Friday through Monday. That change has been successful. It's a short term change, obviously, but we. We altered our hours to meet the demands of the public and when they could come to, to see us. And we've seen great attendance over the weekends. Obviously, at this point, our capacity is still limited um, by order of the, the mayor and the governor, uh, and we're following those guidelines. But so far, so good. And as I said before, um, the numbers are increasing. You're not going to like this, Timothy, I know, because you're a member of the arts, but it's true. You are actually a business. You have expenses. You have many employees. I mean, you, you're the arts, but you also have a balance sheet. How, how are the financials? How has the pandemic rocked and made you reevaluate how you operate? Well, no surprise. It, it has been one of the most challenging years in the history of the museum when it comes to our finances. Um, your, your listeners read, need to understand that, that our budget um, is composed of many different revenue streams. One third of it comes through earned income, Pe people coming on site, buying admissions tickets, becoming members, uh, shopping in our store, and so on. And when the pandemic began, um, the, all those revenue streams went to zero. So we've had to, to cut our budget back. We've had to, to mind our expenses very carefully. Uh, we've had to go into basically um, hibernation for a, a while until we could get back to business. And we're not going to be there for a while. So it's been it's been a huge challenge for us, but one we're we're working together to overcome. Yeah. Well, that's great to hear because you, you do such a fantastic job. One of the world's uh, leading museums of any kind. Before we let you go, Timothy, I got to ask you, uh, are you buying non fungible tokens, digital art? What's your take on this? Uh, this latest trend or craze, or maybe it's the future. I, I don't want to call it a craze because that implies it's going to end. What's your take on what we are seeing in the art world right now? Well, you're seeing vast changes. We don't have uh, any NFTs yet. We, we're, we don't have a cryptocurrency account, so I can't say we're in that business. But but I will say that, that we follow, um, obviously, the artists, what they do and what they make. And so we've been collecting. Uh, digital video for, for many, many years now. When we present exhibitions, uh, increasingly, uh, we're working in the digital realm with projections and, and the like. Um, uh, and it, it's inevitable. Um, if, as new technologies emerge, just as printmaking did in the 15th century or photography did in the 19th century, um, we will look at those, we will see what artists are doing with them, and then the, we will follow their lead. And if we if we're going to collect them, we will eventually. Um, it's, it's the way of the future. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.